Chapter 15 India Wins Independence The Indian independence struggle had become more extensive during the period of the Second World War. The demand for the independence of India was gaining in strength. The British rulers realized that it was necessary to take serious cognizance of this situation. Accordingly, the British government began preparing various plans for granting independence to India. The Indian National Congress was founded on the principle of secularism. People of all castes and religions had taken part in the national struggle. In order to weaken the freedom struggle, the British adopted the policy of divide and rule. This resulted in the formation of the Muslim League. It was against this background that Hindu organizations like the Hindu Mahasabha and Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh were also founded. Dr. Muhammad Iqbal, a well-known Urdu poet, put forth the idea of an independent Muslim state. Later, Chaudhary Rehmat Ali coined the name Pakistan. Barrister Muhammad Ali Jinha put forth the two-nation theory and demanded a separate Muslim state for the Muslims. Barrister Jinha and the Muslim League started a propaganda that the Indian National Congress is a Hindu organization and Muslims would not at all benefit from it. Wavell Plan The then Viceroy of India, Lord Wavell, drew up a plan in June 1945. Among the major provisions included in this plan were a proper representation to Muslims, Dalits and the minorities in the central and provincial legislatures and an equal number of Hindu and Muslim members in the Viceroy's Executive Council. A meeting of all major political parties in India was called at Shimla to consider Wavell's plan. However, at this meeting, a consensus was not arrived at. Barrister Jinha insisted that only the Muslim League should have the right to suggest the names of Muslim representatives to the Viceroy's Executive Council. The Congress opposed this contention. This plan could not succeed. The Cabinet Mission After the end of the Second World War, the British rulers became favourable to giving independence to India. The British Prime Minister Attlee clarified Britain's policy about India in the Parliament. According to it, the right of the Indians to make their own constitution was recognised. It was made clear that the issues about minorities would not come in the way of India's independence. The Prime Minister also announced that a delegation of British ministers was being sent to India to negotiate with the Indians. The cabinet mission consisting of Pethick Lawrence, Stafford Cripps and A.V. Alexander, who were all British ministers, arrived in India in March 1946. They put England's plan about India before the Indian leaders. This plan is known as the cabinet mission plan. It was proposed to establish a federation of India comprising the provinces under the British government and the princely states. The Indians would themselves prepare the constitution of the federation. Till the drafting of the constitution, India would be ruled by the interim government in consultation with the Viceroy. Some of the provisions in the plan were not acceptable to the Congress. Similarly, as there was no provision for the creation of an independent Muslim state, the Muslim League was also dissatisfied. Thus, the Cabinet Mission Plan was not accepted in its entirety. The Direct Action Day In accordance with the Cabinet Mission Plan, elections were held for establishing a constituent assembly in which the Congress secured an overwhelming majority. The Muslim League refused to join the constituent assembly. The League strongly demanded the partition of India. It was declared that 16th August 1946 would be observed as the direct action day with a view to explaining the League stand on the creation of Pakistan. The followers of the Muslim League resorted to violent ways. There were Hindu-Muslim riots all over the country. There were massacres in the Noakhali region in the province of Bengal. In order to put a stop to this violence, Gandhiji went there without giving a thought to his own life. He strove hard to establish peace there. The Establishment of Interim Government 
In such anarchic conditions, the Viceroy Lord Wavell formed an interim government of Indian representatives. The cabinet under the leadership of Jawaharlal Nehru took over the governance of the country. The Muslim League initially declined to participate in the working of the interim government. But later, the League changed its decision and participated in the interim government. The League pursued the policy of obstruction. Therefore, the interim government could not work smoothly. Actually, the British Prime Minister announced in the Parliament of England that England would transfer all of its government responsibility not later than June 1948. He also announced the appointment of Mountbatten as India's new Viceroy, who was to arrange for the early transfer of the governance of India into the hands of Indians. Mountbatten Plan As the partition of India became inevitable, Mountbatten decided to partition it. Accordingly, he held discussions with the prominent leaders of India. Thereafter, he prepared a plan to partition India and to create two independent nations of India and Pakistan. The Indian National Congress was opposed to partition. The unity of the country was the basis of the Congress stand. But the Muslim League remained adamant on the creation of Pakistan. Therefore, there was no other alternative left and the Congress most unwillingly gave its consent to the decision of partition. The Act of Indian Independence On 18 July 1947, the British Parliament passed the Act of Indian Independence based on the Mountbatten Plan. The Act provided that on 15th August 1947, partitioning India, two independent nations of India and Pakistan would come into existence. Thereafter, the British Parliament would not retain any control over them. The British sovereignty over the princely states would also come to an end. They would be free to join either India or Pakistan or remain independent. India wins independence India attained independence in accordance with the Act of Indian Independence. A meeting of the Constituent Assembly was going on in the Hall of the Parliament House in Delhi till the midnight hour on 14 August 1947. At the stroke of the midnight hour, India's dependence came to an end. India became an independent country. The Union Jack of Britain was lowered and in its place the Indian tricolor was unfurled. The chains of years of slavery fell away. Since the establishment of the British power in India, hundreds of thousands of Indians had made tremendous sacrifices for the independence of India. Many had sacrificed their lives. The freedom now won was the fruit of their great sacrifice. The first Prime Minister of Independent India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, aptly expressed the importance of this historic movement in his memorable speech. It is fitting that at this solemn moment, we take the pledge of dedication to the service of India and her people and to the still larger cause of humanity. Hundreds of thousands of Indians celebrated the independence of India with enthusiasm. The joy of attainment of freedom was not untinted. The people of India were grieved because of the partition of the country and the terrible violence. Gandhiji did not join the celebration of independence. Instead, he strove to maintain peace and communal harmony in Bengal. Within six months of attainment of freedom, Nathuram Godse brutally assassinated Gandhiji on 30th January 1948. Gandhiji strove day and night to preserve Hindu-Muslim unity and laid down his life in the same cause. India becomes a Republic State The Constituent Assembly started its work of drafting the Constitution of India in 1946. The Constituent Assembly included a number of honorable members such as Dr. Rajendra Prasad, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, Sarojini Naidu, J.B. Kriplani, Rajkumari Amrit Kaur, Durgabai Deshmukh and Hansa Ben Mehta. The assembly appointed a drafting committee under the chairmanship of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar to prepare a draft of the constitution. The constitution of independent India came into force on 26 January 1950. Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar is the architect of the Constitution of India.
Indians had kept their firm belief in the values of liberty, equality, fraternity and democracy close to their heart in their struggle against the British imperialism. Our constitution is based on these very values.